you and where you are joining us. Joining us from okay. And I'll start with myself. I'm Chukwu Emeka, and I'm currently in Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria. So you can just type in your name and your location, the country of where you are, so that we can easily get to know everyone. Okay, so let's get it started. Today, we're going to have an amazing session. Okay, while I'm bringing up my screen, please let's, uh, you know, start the introduction so that I'll get to know everyone. I can't see anything yet. Can anyone hear me though? Can't see any, okay, I can see um Sisi from Tanzania, fantastic. Can see Chinelo from Nigeria, amazing. All right, let's keep it coming, let's keep it coming. Let's keep it coming. Is it only um, Chinelo and Sisi that we have on the call? I can see Daniel from Ghana, I can see Lape from Canada. Fantastic. Fantastic, let's keep it coming, guys. Let's keep it coming so that we get to know each and every one of um know ourselves the way we are on this call. The beauty, the beautiful thing about sessions like this is that you get to easily interact with people across the globe. All right. You get to meet people that is in UK, people that is in US, people that is in Canada, and so on as well. People in Africa, of course. Okay, we have Abimbola from UK, we have Wasu from London, England, we have Sunday from Canada. Amazing. So this is to show you that we have a lot of people that are scattered across several countries in the world. And that's the beauty of tech. It can be anywhere and be everyone together at the same time. All right, so we can continue with the introduction while I also introduce the topic for today. So to explain in-demand jobs in UK, US, Canada, that you can learn without prior experience or related degree. So what we've seen over the years is that people want to get into the tech industry. People want to get into a job that is going to offer them high return on investment. And in the same time, they want to be able to learn these jobs without going to school back or spending two, three years going to school to learn that exact skill. So that's the gap that we are here to talk about tonight so that each and every one of you that is on this call will get to understand every single thing that we are doing tonight. And I also love to know your reason for being on the call, okay? So personally for you, what would you love to take out from this exact session tonight? So that I'll make sure that by the time we are done speaking, we must scratch that exact area that you want us to speak about. Okay, so you can drop it in the chat box. What's your main reason? What, what you want to take out from this exact session? So that I'll be sure that we'll scratch that exact thing before we finish tonight. Okay, let's keep it coming. Okay, I'm looking to transition into cyber security field. That's from Abimbola. Fantastic. So definitely we are going to talk about cyber security because it's, it's part of the things that is in the man right so definitely we're going to talk about cyber security right so guys let's keep dropping the chat box your main reason what you would love to take out from this session so that i'll be sure that we would scratch that exact area before we finish tonight is it only a bimbola that i have on the court tonight she's been so so uh you know chatting for every other person has been quiet okay be an interactive class where we converse, we speak about these things so that it can easily flow between each and every one of us. Okay, Lapez La said, change career paths. Fantastic, change career paths. So definitely we are going to speak about it. Hi, Elijah, your hand. Uh, Chilo said, acquire skills to, to apply and say also, okay, so while we're waiting for cast from this exact session tonight, we are going to instantly dive right into it. Okay, we are going to dive right into it. What I would advise you to do is that if you know a friend that will benefit from this exact session, you are free to share the link to this session to him or her so that they can join and hear every single thing that we have to say pertaining to highest paying in demand jobs in UK, US, Canada that you can learn without prior experience or All right. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I um, Please confirm you can hear me. I've been gapped. Confirm you can hear me. 
Hi, Dami, I can hear you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to today's session. And like Chukumika was saying, it promises to be very exciting. So Chukumika and I are going to be hosting you for today. And whilst he's off, I will just take over from where he stopped. Also, um, Binga, I know there's a bit of a... Okay, people are sending messages directly. So if you can make it possible for everyone to send messages to the chat so they can know that they have other people here. Thank you very much, Wasil. So it's good to be here. And like I said, um, I'm just going to take over from where Chukwemeka stops whenever he stops and we'll be hosting this session together. All right. So um, while people are still introducing themselves, my name is Dam Lola and I am joining you from Lagos, Nigeria. And um, like um, Chukwemeka said, if you're going to if you have people that you love, people that you want to see them grow, you are interested in their growth as well, please feel free to share the link with them. This is a session where everybody should benefit from. So I'm going to bring up my screen. <laughs> I'm going to bring up my screen and um, we'll just get started immediately. All right. Let me know when my screen, screen is up. You can just drop a one for me in the chat. If you can see my screen clearly, please drop a one for me in uh in the chat. Anybody? Anybody, anybody, anybody. All right, cool. Thank you very much. So my name is Dam Lola and I'm joining you from Lagos, Nigeria. And this session today is brought to you by Ten Analytics. All right, it's one of the leading educational technology companies here in um you know, in Alberta, Canada. So I'm going to very quickly introduce Tenalytics, what we do and what we stand for, then we'll move straight into the topic for today, which is highest paying in demand jobs in the UK, in the US, in Canada, and how you can learn without prior experience. All right, so this is a Tenalytics um, masterclass and it promises to be very exciting. So who are we and what do we do at Tenalytics? Let me just make my okay so we are a leading educational technology company that is highly focused on providing specialized training in technology skills and delivering comprehensive data consulting services um across the globe you know in general and with over four years of experience cutting across helping people transition into um career paths like data analytics data science business analysis and uh, we have data engineering we've got financial analytics we have um agile project management and scrum and then we have cyber security and ai engineering so with over four years of experience and people transition into different tech career paths we have been building the talent for the technology workforce and we have helped over two thousand people transition from the classroom into their first job their first role in tech across the globe as well you know so the uk us canada europe africa asia <clears throat> atlantic antarctica and so on and so forth okay and then we have a team of instructors from leading global companies um cutting across companies like apple um, microsoft mckinsey sahara um google and so on and so forth all right and then we always help to bring a wealth of real world experience and are very dedicated to delivering an engaging practical real life learning experience uh, that ensures that you receive maximum value for your investments in the future so if you are interested in getting to know what we do at analytics you know just follow us on linkedin at Gen analytics on instagram at Gen analytics as well uh Twitter at Tenalytics, and of course, check out our website at tenalytics.io. Okay. Um, that is what we do at Tenalytics. So, me, your host for today, like I said, I'm going to be co hosting with Chukwemeka. And this is Chukwemeka. Um, he is a technology consultant with nearly a decade of experience in, um, in governance, risk and compliance, strategic um, consulting. He is the CEO of Tenalytics and has guided over 1,000 individuals with no prior tech background into successful technology careers. 
enabling these people to secure their first jobs in tech. <clears throat> um, he has diverse experience that encompasses governance risk and compliance in the banking sector. He has worked at, as the head of control in a fintech. He has also worked as a data analyst with a fintech. Um, Chukumika has worked in the business consulting as a business consultant in, in the hospitality sector. He has worked across the financial services, capital markets, hospitality, and of course the ed tech sectors. So um, feel free to connect with Chukwemeka at um, Chukwemeka Ikpa on LinkedIn, on Twitter at Emeka Iced, and of course on Instagram at um, Ikpa Chukwemeka. So that's for Chukwemeka, all right? So, and then there's me. I do not have a slide here, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get straight into what we have for today. So what are we here for today? What are we going to be doing today? Number one, I'm just going to um, put that on highlight. So number one for today, we are going to be looking at in-demand jobs in the UK, in the US, and Canada with I return on investment. So if you're here today, and of course you're maybe in the UK, you're in the US and Canada, or you are looking to port jackpot in the future, you're looking to, you know, move to any of these countries, we are going to be, uh, so what do you say they can't hear me? Can you, can you guys hear me? Please confirm you can hear me. Hi, Demi, I can hear you. All right, thank you very much, Binga. So Emma, if you if you can't hear me, you just need to tap on the microphone on your screen to join to join um to join the section the session. All right. So so like I said, uh, as I was saying, we are going to be speaking on in demand jobs, and now you can also get started. Uh, you know, if if you're looking to um learn skills that are that have high return on investment. Then, secondly, we'll look at your tech pathway. Your tech pathway to becoming a your pathway to becoming a tech professional and securing a job. All right. So it's very important that if at any point in time you're looking to get into tech, you also have like a, a very structured pathway, which is one of the things that we offer here at Ten Analytics. So the pathway to becoming a tech professional and securing a job. So it's one thing to become a tech professional. It's another thing to actually secure a job as a tech professional. We'll look at that today. Then we'll also look at our Tenalytics Growth Internship Program. It's called Growth for a reason, all right? So we'll look at um the internship program, what it entails, and how you can be a part of this internship program, or you can take advantage of this internship program and then lastly, we'll look at the best of the best, which is our special discount offer to you, a gift for you today, you know, the <clears throat> end of the year gifts or what have you. These are the four things that we're going to be looking at today. And I hope everybody here is excited. So if you are, and you can't wait for us to get started, can you drop for me in the chat your best emoji? You know, <clears throat> can you drop for me in the chat your favorite emoji? Let's go, Abimbola. I see you. Thank you, Aimwa. Kenneth, let's go, let's go. More people. I need more people to drop their emoji in the chat. Let me know if you're excited. You're, you can't wait for us to get started. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. All right. So first off, <clears throat> I have this um this this slide here, which speaks to the high paying jobs that we have in the UK. So these are the general jobs that you see everywhere um, uh, from different sectors in the UK. We have people working as the engineer, as an engineer, right? We have people working in, as architects, as um, business analysts. We have the dentists, you know, people that fix the teeth or the tooth, <clears throat> right? We have the marketing director, we have the lawyers, we have the CEOs, um, the C-suite guys. We also have the surgeon, which is, um, you know, a very dicey one. We have the director of information and security. We've got the psychiatrist. I hope I pronounced that correctly. We've got the accountants. We have the, okay, this is a very um, anesthesiologist. You get what I mean? <laughs> So we have the data scientists, we have the investment bankers. We also have more here where we have um we have a slide that speaks to the ISP in jobs in the US, right? 
this is um in the uk according to the research that we have done and i want you to also like take notes um take notes of of some of the skills that speaks to what we do here we have the business analyst here we've got the data scientist um we have the engineer as well then we also have um we also have highest paying jobs in the UK, uh, in the US. Um, okay, we also have the highest paying jobs in the US. We have um, the healthcare guys, we have the business and management. We have the technology, we have the engineering, we have the finance, we have construction and real estate. And then we have the hospitality guys. So um, this is just me trying to introduce to you the different paying jobs that we have. And then I'm going to bring up my another co-host for today, which is Isosa, to take over from here. All right, Isosa. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, uh, Damalola. At first, I was surprised why you did not introduce me, because, of course, uh, you mentioned that we have uh, just you and Chukwameka will be hosting the session. And I felt a little bit pained. Oh, so it seems I just has been forgotten. Just sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, there's no problem. So um, I think I can share my screen. All right, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the session, of course. And um, I'm Aishusa, Aishusa Agbonlaho, and I would be your co-host today. And we'll be taking a look at some of the tech roles, the tech career path that you can actually succeed in as, uh, that you know, you're looking to make a switch. You're looking to get into tech. What can you do? What is that role that you can succeed in? Damilola has done a fantastic job showing us some of the in-demand jobs in the US and the UK. But I'll tell you a little bit about that. Start with me, okay? I'll tell you a little bit about that. Now, I will share my screen. I will share my screen. At the start of the session, Chukwameka mentioned something. And what was that? That you are going to be having fun today. Chukwe make a mention something. And what was that? That you were going to be learning a lot today. Chukwe make a mention something. And what was that? That the fact that you're here right now it just made your day a whole lot better. Now, of course, it didn't say that. I'm the one added that in. Okay. So yeah, you are going to be learning a lot. And I'm going to go ahead to share my screen and let's take a look at something. But first of all, Aisha, sir. Who is Aisha, sir? Okay. So Aisha, sir, I'm the training operations lead here at Analytics. And I'm a seasoned ex um, expert, a seasoned technology expert. I have experience in data analytics and business analysis, in power platform development, and also a predictive AI engineering. But that's just boring things about me. There are more fun things, which probably you would find out uh, before we end the session. You get probably get, get to hear about the more fun things about me. All of those things are mundane, ordinary. Things that, uh, you know, probably other persons have been able to do. Probably you have been able to do as well. Okay. But yeah. Now, um, Damlola showed us this. The high paying jobs in the UK. And this was gotten via research. I'm sure everyone on the call, you want to make money. Okay? So we want to make money. We want to switch. We want to, we want to make, a, we want to make a, a switch to a career path that we know that we can not just get only our needs, but that also we can get our wants. Because for me, I do believe that your needs are not the only important thing. Of course, you want to go ahead to be able to uh, to, uh, you want to go ahead to be able to, uh, you, you know, purchase clothing, your food, and your shelter. I believe those are the basic needs. Uh, that's a long time now. That was taught back in school. Okay. But you also want to be able to get your wants. You want to be able to buy a pair of shoes that cost a thousand dollars without thinking twice. It's something that you want to be able to do as well. And so you want to make that switch. What you are doing at the moment, probably not giving you what you want. What you are doing at the moment, you probably have what we call dreading Mondays. It's Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. And you are thinking, oh, how can I actually, oh, oh yeah, today is Sunday and tomorrow is Monday. And you are thinking, oh, I don't want Monday to come because you dread walking. Like people say that weekends are shorter and weekdays are longer. Now, yes, 
weekday is a longer because we have five days, Monday to Friday. But that is not what, what that means, what that idiom or that popular phrase means now is that people that um, people like weekends more than weekdays. And that occurs when you really don't like what you're doing. From the research that we carried out, we're able to see the highest paying jobs in the UK. And of course, you see some of, um, some popular roles here. You see things like your engineer, your architect, you see things like your dentist, your marketing director, all of those things. But for you to get into each and every one of those roles or some of the roles, let's ignore some of them now. Let's ignore the business analytics, for example, or a career in data science. Let's ignore those now. For you to get into a role, as an engineer, or you want to become a lawyer, or you want to become an architect, I want you to give me a rough estimate and send that to the chat box. Give me a rough estimate. How long do you think you would need to learn this queue? Come on, I need a rough estimate. How long, a year, two years, three years, how long do you think it's going to take you to become a surgeon? So come on, guys, I need responses, okay? So please send your response to the chat box. We are going to be communicating. I always love communication. And it's something that I say each and every time that we need to communicate. And what is communication to me? Communication is, and I will repeat, communication is, I speak, you speak, and we all speak, okay? I speak, you speak, and we all speak. So how long do you think it would take you to become a surgeon? Abimbola says four years or more. Abimbola is on point. Abimbola says, says for you to become a surgeon, you need to stay and learn for at least four years or more. Okay? Um, uh, Asugara says for you to be a BA, that's in two months, but we'll get to that, okay? What I'm asking about now is if you want to be an engineer, how long do you have to learn? If you want to be a, if you want to be a, um, if you want to be a surgeon, how long do you have to learn? Ahmed says at least four years to become an engineer. Okafo says about four years. Sesi says five years, and Peter says seven in Nigeria. But that's just about five or six responses, and we are over hundred on the call. Come on, guys, I need responses, okay? Adenike, what do you think? For you to be a surgeon, how long do you have to learn? Okay, um, um, I think yeah, Ahmed has uh, uh, responded. Uh, Busala, what do you think? For you to be a for you to be a lawyer, how long do you have to learn? Choma, what do you think? Christabel, Deborah, uh, Emma, Emmanuel, Fatima, what do we all think? For you to be able to get into any of this, uh, for you to for you to be able to become a surgeon, for you to be uh, become an engineer, an architect, a dentist, a lawyer, a psychiatrist, how long will it take you? Four years, five years. Good work, everyone. Fantastic. Now, I want to ask another question. Do you think you'd have the time? All right. Or let's place, let's, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. What would you prefer? What would you prefer? That you can learn a skill for four months or five months, and that you know, or you have, and, and that you can learn a skill for four months or five months, and then of course you um, get a job, you start earning well, earning so well. And when I say earning well, I mean that you are able to get not just your needs but also your wants. Most importantly, your wants. Okay, what would you prefer? A skill that you learn for three months or four months, and then of course you earn well. A one that you would have to learn for five years, six years, seven years, as the case may be, and that, of course, you also end well. Which of them would you prefer at this point in your life? Okay, at this point in your life, which of them would you prefer? Come on. Responses, please. Responses. So I need to see our answers. Okafo says a skill to learn within what? Four months. Okafo says what? A skill to learn within four months. What about the rest of us? What do we think? Which of them would you choose? Would you go for four months or would you go for five years six years seven years pressure says a skill within four months please pressure does not like you know does not like stress okay a skill within four months i just i need a skill that i can learn four months i'm good i'm fantastic i'm good to go you know everything everything is rosy dozy everything is fantastic all right patricia says right now you know right now i don't have the time Gone are the days when you want to learn something for five years, six years. Right now, I have things I want to do. You know, I have, uh, I need to make 
enough money as quickly as possible. So right now, I just want something I can lend shortly, just, you know, three months, four months, five months, thereabouts. And then, of course, I can always continually um, learn um, in the job. Of course, learning is continuous, but I can just learn for three months, four months. I can get a job and then continue learning from, from there. Fantastic. Now, for you to be a surgeon, you can't not learn for five months and then learn on the job. No. For you to be a surgeon, you have to learn for, let's say, seven, ten to ten years. That's even, you know, because, of course, you have to begin with, uh, uh, you have to begin uh, as a resident. So you have a resident before you then study some more, before you become a specialist, before you become a surgeon and all of that. So it's it's not just... OK, so let's say you have to learn for seven, 10 years stop. Let's not let's not uh, let's not let's not put things. Let's not exaggerate. OK, so let's say seven, 10 years stops. Patricia says 11 years. OK, so let's say that. And then you then begin to work as a surgeon. And of course, you would need to still continually learn on the job. And we don't have time for that. This is where the tech skills come in. And as you can see, for the highest paying jobs, you can also see tech skills. You can see business analyst. You can see data science. And there are a whole lot more. We'll get into a report. I'll show you a report very soon. Okay, just stay with me. Stay with me. Just listening. I got you. Okay? Time with ISOSA is phone time. So this is what the UK is saying. Now, we have another report from the US. The career path, um, the career path that are um heavy in demand that uh you know that are high, high paying, and then what do you see? You can see healthcare, you can see business and management, you can see what technology, tech what technology, and then you can see your engineering, your finance, and the rest. Okay, and then also taking a look at Canada. We can see healthcare, and then when we come over here, we see what project management, which is a tech skew. We see what data science stroke technology, which is what a tech skew. It's possible for you to learn the skill within the within four months, within five months top tops, get a job and start earning well. It's all in tech, but you might be wondering: Is it really possible? Or are you just feeding us fables now? You might be wondering, is it just, is it really possible? Or is it that I can, um, or is it really possible? Or uh, is I just, just there to, to say nice things? Is it really possible? Or is I just, just trying to, just trying to make my night? And then when I do my own research, I find that, that that's really not the case. Is I just, just feeding us tell tales? No. By the way, something you might have noticed. I don't know if you guys noticed this. If you noticed it, send to the chat box I, I noticed. Okay? I've been referring to myself so much as Isusa. I say Isusa, Isusa. I love referring to myself in the third person. Okay? So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I love trying to take a look at things from uh, another perspective and say, oh, Isusa, Isusa, referring to my own self. It's just uh, a pet peeve. So it's just... Anyways, that's by, the, that's by the way, just in case you were wondering, am I referring to another person? No, I'm not. I'm referring to myself, okay? Anyways, we would see why the tech role, we would see why, um, what you'd, we would see why in tech, you can actually learn in four months, learn a skill four months, five months, and get a job. Note, it's not all tech skills. It's not all tech skills. Not all. There are some that you need to learn for a year, two years, but... I'm with you. Okay, I'll show you the way. All right, let's move on. Now, you want to know which tech career should I actually get into and which of them guarantees me getting a job. Remember I just mentioned that in tech, you can learn a skill for three months, you can learn a skill for four months, and you would, what? You would get a job. And then, of course, you can continue continue learning while on the job. Yeah, learning doesn't change. That's that's a no brainer. But that what's this? That the skills you need to get the job, you can learn for three months, four months, and that you can get the job. It's possible in tech, but like I said, it's not every tech role. 
It's just like some persons will come out to tell me. Because I receive lots and lots of emails. I receive lots and lots of messages on LinkedIn and on socials. People asking me to, oh, to give them guidance, to mentor them and things like that. And something I usually see is that, oh, I should say I'm in tech and they mention one tech skill. There are so many tech skills, like so, so many, okay? They mention the tech skill. I don't want to go ahead to mention any of them now. So it doesn't seem like, oh, I should say, I should say, okay? But they mention a tech skew and they're like oh i've not been able to get a job i've not been able to do this i've not been able to do that and then i tell them you want to you want to get going to tech now tell me this is a question i ask them and this is a question i want to ask you the reason you go into tech or the reason you want to make that switch into tech is it because there's this particular skill that you just love it's not like the reason why you want to go into tech is like is that you just love tech that's the reason. Like, I just love tech. I just love technology. Okay? That's the reason you're getting to tech. Or is it because you want to make good money? You want to ensure that you do, that you are able to transition and that you want to get into a role that you are sure of what getting a job. Is that the reason? If that's the reason, then there are some tech skills, there are some tech roles that are for you and there are some that are not for you. So which of them would is for, which of them should you go into? Which of them is the right path? There are so many paths, but only few are true. If you are with me, send um send a one to the chat box, okay? Or if you are with me, just send. Let's send something else. Let's send something from send tech. Or send tech is the way. If you know you're with me on the session, you're listening in, send tech is the way. So from um a family just sent tech. Kenneth sent tech. Emilia sent tech. Okay. And Undwalk says tech is the way. Question says what tech is the way. Exactly. Okay. Tech is the way. So um I I really need to I just give me a moment so I can disable uh this. I think some persons are writing on my screen. Okay. Uh so I'll just think. Okay. Great. So tech is what tech is the way. <laughs> um, as 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 Garu Baru went a step further to say, tech is promising and the way. It is the way, people. It is the way, friends. I believe I can say friends. Maybe we're not friends yet. But uh, except if you want to be my friend, so if you want to be my friend, you can try to connect with me on LinkedIn, on socials, okay? If you want to be my friend, you can send, oh, I want to be your friend, okay? But I don't want to assume. So I'm going to say at this point, I'll believe we are at least acquaintance, okay? So we are acquaintance, acquaintances, and I can go ahead to say guys. I can refer to you guys as guys, okay? Because like I said, I want us to be somewhat informal. So we have a lot of fun. So guys, I can see, Yes, everyone is saying tech is the way. And yes, tech is the way. I dare say tech is the one true way. If you are looking to make good money and you want to make a switch as quickly as possible. Okay? Stay with me. Let's move on. Now, what skills, what path should you be taking a look at? What path... Uh, with what parts can we categorize and say that this is the one true way? That if you want to see the light, this is the path. That this path leads to what? Leads to you getting a job, leads to you ending well. And this path leads to you not getting a job or getting a job. Uh, or Yeah, you could still get a job, but that the effort you would now need to put will be times three, times four, than the effort you would need to put in, put in this other path. We have eight career path that are very much lucrative are tech skills and that you have a very high chance of getting a job i'm talking about the business analyst i'm talking about you being an agile project manager that's the scrum master as a scrum master um as an agile project manager you are also a scrum master i'm talking about you being a data analyst i'm talking about you being a data scientist I'm talking about you being a data engineer, a cybersecurity analyst, a financial analyst, and I'm talking about you being an HR analyst. 
how did we even come across this? How? How did we how did we decide? Because because I, I love stating facts. I don't like just giving us uh, just giving telltales, like I mentioned earlier, just say things. Because someone reached out to me earlier, or I think in one of the sessions we had, and uh, someone said something like, uh, it's, it's some time ago, it's been a while now. What did the person say? Like, I feel you might just be saying good things because you are kind of marketing and all of those things. And I'm like, what? Marketing? Definitely not. Okay? At Tenalytics, we have a mission. That's the reason why we started all of this. And what was that? It was to get as many Black Africans, as many Africans, okay, and the Black community in general into tech by lowering the tech barrier. Because we took a look at the industry, we took a look at the tech industry, and we saw that we that we saw that we don't have as we don't have as much. Um, and what did we say? We saw that we don't have as much um as much. Um, pe uh, persons of African descent in the tech world, as we see in other industries. Of course, we see we see the uh, we see the Asians, we see you know other races, but that's not really not the case for us. That's really not the case. But of course, when you then look at some other career path, yeah, you know what some persons that what um that is popularly termed surviving jobs. Then oh, so now we see many of um um uh, many persons of uh, the African descent, and we decided that. Let's start something that would be able to that um let's start something that would be able to get as many persons into tech so you can have that dream role, so you can make that money that you want to make. Now, why did I go into this? Why did I go into history? I know that we are not historians, except if you studied history in school, and then maybe you are an historian. I didn't study history. Okay, but uh, here I am giving you a bit of history. Why? Because we did not just decide on these eight programs because we felt like it. We have a mission. And so whatever we do, whenever we do it, it's based on facts because we want the best for you. We want something that you will go ahead to do and that you are sure of doing it, right? And that whatever it is you want to achieve, that you do and eventually achieve that. We want you to succeed. And so the way we actually came around these eight different programs is that we did our research. We did, we, uh, we are a data company, of course. So we took a look at the data. We went on various job boards, okay? We went on various job boards and we scraped data from this um, from this board and then we analyzed the data to take a look at those rows that are always of your calling jobs that are what that are always for your calling like the um every like okay you can try this out like i said we are spitting facts yet yeah so if you have the time you can go on any job board of your choice right now as I'm speaking, you can go on any job board of your choice and you can search for, let's say, data analyst. And you will see rows that were posted two minutes ago. You see those that were posted an hour ago. You see those that were posted 10 hours ago, yesterday. When you go to another job board and you search for new rows, you will see what? New rows. Roles that are when you search for new when I say when you search for new roles, I mean when you search for like data analyst again, you're going to see new roles. Roles that are different from the job post that you actually saw in the previous job board. That's to tell you that there are so many roles available. You can try this out, like I said. And then when you check the job board the next day, so you check the job boards tomorrow, you will see that new roles have been have been uploaded. To show you the frequency at which job openings are available for each and every one of this career path. We took a look at the data and we saw that we took a look at the data and we saw that um these eight path, that these eight um um these eight career path that's from business analysis down to HR analytics, um down to HR analytics, that they were always reappearing over and over and over again. And then we also wanted something that is easy to learn because we didn't want a situation whereby when you go ahead to, um, to, okay, let's say you want to be what kind of, let's say, let's say robotics. 
Okay, let's say robotics, for instance. Robotics. Now, you can go online and probably see, you see so many job openings for robotics. But is robotics something you can learn so quickly? Is that really the case? So we now also be carried out, use the filter to take a look at, okay, so these are the roles. We saw roles that are always available. So you are sure of getting a job. But we now filter down based on TV criteria. Number one, ease of learning. And what does ease of learning mean? Ease of learning is saying if something you can learn easily. At the start of the session, we all agreed that we want a role we can go ahead to learn for three months, four months, five months tops, and that we will be able to get a job with the skill that we've been able to get, that we've been able to garner. So we took a look at the job, the jobs, and then we took a look at those that you can learn within three, four, five months, and that you will be able to get the skills that will get you the job. We also took a look at ease of transitioning. For the ease of transitioning, that was how easy can you transition based on two things. Number one is you needing a background. Do you need to have a background for you to transition? That is, do you need to have worked as a data engineer for you to be able to transition to get a job as a data engineer? That was the first criteria. Okay. And then the second criteria is um, on ease of transitioning is how frequent are the job openings? Because when there's just one role available, and you have about 2 million persons trying to get that single role. I don't think you'll call that ease of transitioning. I think you'll call that, uh, what's the opposite of ease? Is there an opposite of ease now? So what's the opposite of ease? Okay. So I want us to send to the chat box. What's the opposite of ease? So ease, e -A, a difficulty. Thank you very much, Patricia. Okay. Difficult. Thank you, thank you very much. So, and then he says, difficult. So, um, um, for if there's if you have a career path that is just one job role available, and you have like five million persons trying to apply for that role, I don't think you can call that easy to transition, but you call that difficult to transition, okay, or whatever. Okay, so we wanted roles that are easy, um, that are easy for you to transition into. So we also needed to pick those that there were so many opportunities available, like numerals. And of course, we took a look at the Benjamins. What are the Benjamins? Okay, the Benjamins. The Benj <laughs> the money, exactly, Patricia. Okay, we took a look at what the Benjamins. Because you don't want to get something, a job that you are you are um struggling to make ends meet. And our target was not you making ends meet. Our target was you making above ends meet, which is the reason why we have what? I am rewarding salary. And we're able to see that these eight career paths that they offer those three things from ease of learning to ease of transitioning to what? To I am rewarding salary but that was just us okay that was just us we realize something and this is a popular notion many persons know this that when you are actually going ahead when you are trying to that when you are trying to when you are carrying out research for your Self, when you're carrying out research for your benefits, there could be a likelihood of bias. It might not be intentional, but there could be bias. We did not want to stop. We did not just want to stop at wherever it is we stopped. We didn't just want to carry out our own research and then go ahead to say, oh, this is the way and that this is the path to victory. We wanted someone else that is reputable, that people trust, that have gone ahead to carry out their own research and to see if that would be a backup to what we've done, to know if we are right or not. And that's how we took a look at the World Economic Forum.
The World Economic Forum is a it's um the World Economic Forum they release this report every two years, and the report is titled the future of jobs. The future of jobs report. What does this report show? This report shows you jobs and jo that's jobs, job roles that are available at the moment in terms of opportunities like numerous opportunities that are available at the moment and it also shows you those roles um um it's so let me rephrase so it shows you roles that are um that you have numerous opportunities at, at the moment and that in the next five years in the next six years down to ten years there about that you are also going to have numerous opportunities so not that oh the job is hot in demand right now and the next year no one cares about you anymore we are all scared scared about AI, AI, oh, AI is coming to take her jobs, AI is coming to take her jobs. But like I said some time ago, that AI is not going to replace, this just by the way, this is a fun fact, okay? Late, I will continue, this is just by the way, that AI is not going to replace everyone, okay? AI is not going to replace jobs. It will place for some jobs, but not all jobs. But rather, what we are going to see will be that will be those that can not um those that can use AI. Those that can use what AI will replace those that cannot use AI. Okay, those that can use AI will replace those that cannot use AI. So there was a session we had on this leveraging ai so you can, of course you can go on our youtube channel to check that session out to see how you yourself can also utilize ai in your own career path and how you can succeed okay but that's by the way now we took a look at this report and we got to see the jobs that's even with ai coming with ai doing this doing that and all of that okay that there are still going to be numerous opportunities available in this role because those roles are AI complementary, and that yeah, because um, and that um, uh, and that because of the current trends and current climates, that more opportunities will be opened up. An example is data analytics. Over ninety percent of data currently available in the world was generated just about um was generated just about um about five years ago. Over ninety percent of currently available data. Companies now make decisions based on data. No one cares about your opinions anymore, which is the reason why we now have this popular phrase or this popular sentence, which you've probably heard once or twice, which says, if we have data, let's look at data. But if all we have are opinions, then let's go with mine. I'll repeat that. If we have data, let's look at data. But if all we have are opinions, then let's go with mine. Organizations are now more data-centric than ever. So any role in data is going to be high in demand now and in the future. The World Economic Forum released the report, as I mentioned earlier. And in this report, the jobs by the left are roles that are only going to increase with time in terms of opportunities. And those by the right, those by the left, okay, are going to increase with time. And those by the right are decreasing, are going to decrease. And you'd see that we have AI, um, AI and machine learning specialists. Okay, we have AI and machine learning specialists. We have business intelligence analysts. Okay, and we also have the data analysts and scientists. And all of these are tied to us, the data analysts and data science roles. Some persons are very narrow-minded when searching for jobs. I'll give you a quick secret. Okay, I'll give you a quick secret. So, so you leave, so you leave something, um, so you have something to take home. Okay, let me give you a take home. A take home assignment. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me give you a take home. Now, what's a take home? Many persons are narrow minded when they are searching for jobs. I think that should be the quotes of the year or something. So I just said that. Okay. So many persons are narrow minded when they are searching for jobs. What does it mean to be narrow minded? 
let's say you are a, um, let's say you are a business analyst, and then when you want to apply, you are only searching for business analyst roles, which should not be the case. As a business analyst, there are other roles you can actually work in. You can work as a process automation analyst. You can work as a, as a business data analyst. Numerous roles. Many organizations use synonyms, use other job titles to refer to the same role. For example, some companies refer to their data analyst as a digital product analyst. A digital product analyst is actually a data analyst. Analyst, but a data analyst that specializes in marketing data, analyzing your ads, telling you what happened with their ads and why it happened and all of that. Some organizations that want to employ data analysts, we go ahead to call the, um, let's say it's a supply chain company. The, and the title of the job will be supply chain analyst. So, some, so when people go ahead to apply for jobs, they not have the, uh, when people go ahead to apply for jobs, let's say data analyst, and then you search for data analyst alone, you tend to miss out on opportunities that are available to you. We we'll get, we we'll speak more on that. Okay, so as a data analyst, as a data scientist, you can work as a machine learning specialist. Machine learning is part of the things is part of your bread and butter as a data science, building machine learning models. Your business intelligence analyst. A data analyst can actually can work as a business intelligence analyst. You're, and over here, you see it explicitly written, data analyst and what? Scientist. This is not our research. Okay? This is not our research. This was research carried out by the World Economic Forum. Stay with me, okay? Now, we also have the, for, um, the information security analyst. As a cybersecurity analyst, you can work as an information security analyst. And then for the data engineers, we have the big data and um, the big data specialist, and also the data engineers, also written in here. And as a business analyst, you see we have what the process automation specialist. I repeat, people, these are not these are not um, this document was not created by by Tenalytics. This is external research. As soon as you get the slides, you can click on this to take a look at the full report. To so really, you, it's a long read. It's um, close to it's two hundred and ninety six pages. But what um, this is called, this is on page thirty. So you can focus on page thirty if you don't have the time to take um, read um, all of it. But if you have the time, that's that's um, a fantastic one as well. Okay, and we also have the we also have the project managers. Talking about the Agile um, Scrum project managers. We have the database and network professionals, which is also for the data engineers and cybersecurity analysts. We have the financial analyst. And then we have what the uh, we have the financial analyst, and then we have the supply chain and logistics specialist, which also falls in the realm of the data analytics and data scientists. Over here where we have data analysts and scientists. This actually contains all of the data roles. That's the data analyst roles. Talking about the generalist and the specialist, the data analyst, the HR analyst, and the financial analyst. Something interesting to look at. Um, before I even ask that, um, how many of us know about product management? Do we know about product management? Being a product manager. If you know about being a product manager, maybe you've heard about the role before, you know, someone someone that maybe you know a product manager or someone that said something about being a product manager or two, you know, someone that said it. I want you to send a yes to the chat box. Okay, so are they, I said about product management before. Kenneth has said about product management, great. Uh, and works has said about, uh, I said about product management as well, as well. Brenda, what about you? Brenda, have you heard, heard about product management? Charles, have you heard about product management? Joshua, have you heard, um, heard about product management? Product, product management. Okay, so Patricia hasn't, that's great. Okay, Lois, what about you? Have you heard about product management? So Charles has heard, Peter has heard about it as well. Now, 
the thing about product management is that many persons, it's it's currently in vogue at the moment. Everyone wants to be a product management manager, but the role is going to decline. Because now we have tools, we have teams that can actually do the um, that's actually filling in for our product managers. I'm not the one saying this. The World Economic Forum. They are the ones stating this out. As you can see from this list, remember the, the ones by the left are roles that are going to what increase with time. And the ones by the right are those that are going to what decrease. When we have our investment fund managers, we have chemical processing, plant operators, training and development specialists. You see you have what? Product managers. Product, please don't make this, don't make this mistake. Product management is not project management. There's a difference. Product management is not project management. Project management is a career path for you to get into. That's product manage and project managers. Because it's lucrative, there are so many opportunities, and it's going to be relevant in the future. But product management, you being a product manager, is the reverse. So when I hear people tell me, oh, I, just, uh, I really love product management, I want to be a product manager, I'm like, oh, fantastic, that's great. But if you ask for my advice, of course, I don't I don't go, uh, go around dishing out advice to people that don't ask for it. So I'd say an advice for you, an advice for you, an advice for, for you, um, like uh, like Santa Claus, okay? So, you know, sharing gifts on Christmas Day. So no, I don't do that, <laughs> okay? So except if you want my advice. So I usually say, oh, if you want my advice, okay? And they usually do, okay? That's a disclaimer anyways. So um, I would advise, since you love management, you love uh, managing um, you, you want to manage products. I would advise you go for project manage, management instead, instead of product manage, uh, management, because the, the prospects for being a project manager is higher than being what? A product manager. And as a product as a project manager, there are so many roles available, so many frameworks. You know, you have your Kanban, you have your, your Scrum. But let's move on. Let's move on. I talked about the fact that there are so many jobs you can apply to. And I was not kidding. There are so many jobs you can apply to. Yeah, the roles are available to, um, for a data analyst. The roles are available for a data scientist, a data engineer, a cybersecurity analyst, a business analyst, a financial analyst, a HR analyst, or a scrum master. As a data analyst, you can work as a logistics analyst. Like I said earlier, many persons are narrow-minded. That has to be the quote of the century, okay? <laughs> Anyways, that's just exaggerated, okay? But many persons are what? Now minded. You are a data engineer. And when you are applying for jobs, you're only searching for data engineering roles. Who's, who does that? Search for data engineer, uh, data engineering roles. Search for analytics engineer. Search for your Azure cloud engineer, your ETO developer, your big data specialist. Sometimes it's called big data specialist. Sometimes it's called your big data de um, developer or big data um, engineer. Search for roles titled your database architect or your, uh, yes, your um, database architect. Because as a data engineer, you can function in all of those roles, thereby expanding your search. Now, imagine you apply for 20 data engineering roles, 20 ETL developer roles, 20 big data engineering roles. Come on. You are going to get a, um, get a job. You are going to get at least an interview. Then, of course, you hear the interview and you get a job. It's a no-brainer. Again, if you want the slides... If you want the slides, you want the material, so you can take a look at all of these things. All right, down. Um, moving on. Ensure you fill in the attendance form. It's very, very necessary. So my colleague has been sending the attendance form, the, the attendance form to the uh to the chat box. Ensure you fill it in so you get the recording of the session and the resources and everything that you need to be a part of this. Um, to be a part of this. Uh, um, and everything you need to be um to uh take a look at the slides and to. Uh, you, you know, just reiterate some things, the jobs you can apply to, so you can start testing these things out. 
All right? All right. Remember I mentioned that for you to, that we have career path in tech that you can learn for, well, you know, learn in three months, learn in four months, and you are good to go. Okay? But you might be wondering, is it really true? Is it really true? Are there really persons that have been able to do this? Are there really persons that have been able to learn a skill for three months, four months, and get a job? Because it doesn't sound so feasible. We are we are used to learning for four years. You know, when you back in back in college, back in university, you had to study for four years, for five years, for six years even, and then probably when you went for your masters, you had to do a year with masters, and it doesn't seem it doesn't sound feasible that you can learn a skill in four months. You, you don't even believe yourself. You might be telling yourself, I can do this. I can do this. And then there's other parts of you telling you, no, you cannot. No, you cannot. Okay? Tell that other part of you to what? Take a, take a hike or something. Because it always seems impossible until it is done. We've been able to help over 2,500 persons transition into tech. 2,500. Now, these are persons that did not have knowledge of tech. We're able to help them make a switch to transition from the classroom into their first job, um, their first tech role. Getting a tech job. What that means is that we were able to help people that had no prior knowledge or no prior experience in tech, and they were able to get a job. Adding the if we had to add those that had some knowledge, you know, they could use a tool or two tools before they joined the program. Then we are moving to the four thousand, five thousand range. This is something we've been able to achieve last um the um in in the past four years. I could spend all day going through the numerous testimonials. But I want you to do that. Fill in that, that form. Get access to the slides. You can go on our Instagram, on our YouTube channel, listen to all of these people speak. How we were able to help them make the switch. Listen to Abigail. Listen to Tony. Listen to Steven. Listen to Ikmat. Listen to Abdul Rashid. So many testimonials. I could spend all day. I can have a session dedicated to testimonials. Okay, I can have a session dedicated to just testimonials. So many. Okay, now one other thing you want to you want to um you you might be wondering. Like I said, like I said, is it really possible? I just showed you people that have been able to help make the switch. You can go ahead to listen to them, and hear how they were able to get that done. How we were able to help them out, and how is that possible? we had um six different steps the first step was what identify your desired um your desired tech career so just like we're having a session right now we spoke about the different or we spoke about the different career path and then of course we had a separate session later on like a one-on-one -on -one clarity call whereby um some of them or some of you now Okay, that might not be so clear. Oh, I want to be a data analyst. I want to be a business analyst. Oh, should I go for data analytics or should I go for business analysis? Um, you are you are confused. You don't really know what to do. So would help you what identifying would help you identify the um career path for you. And the next is what to learn the skills. We teach you the skills. You attend classes. You learn everything that you need because of course for you to get a job. You need to be able to do the work. Okay? Yeah. You're going to learn for three, four months. That three, four months you'll be learning, you get the skills you need. No one is going to employ you if you can't do the job. You want to be a data analyst, but you can't use a Power BI. Or you want to be a data analyst and you can't solve problems. So that is the second step. Learning the skills. And then many persons, many persons usually don't have the experience. Because like I said, we've been able to help over 2,500 people transition into tech from the classroom, even those that did not have any prior experience. How did that happen? Because we are factual. I like stated facts. 
I'm sure everyone on the call right now, you know the current reality of things. When you go to apply for a job, you are going to see things like two years experience. Or you must have five years experience. You must have a hundred years experience, 200 years experience. And you might be wondering, was I ever born then that these guys are asking for 200 years experience? Okay? But it's the current reality. Recruiters want you to have some experience under your belt. There's, I really don't believe in entry-level roles. Okay? I don't think they send you to, like, entry-level roles. That's just fiction. Now, that's my own opinion. Okay? Don't, that's just my own opinion. So, I'm sure there are some few entry-level roles out there. But not no one wants entry-level. Why well, settle, well, settle for entry-level when you can get the best? And so, they go ahead to ask for what? Experience. That is the reason why this program has been structured. The way that these guys learned was through what we call experiential learning. Whereby you are learning and you are gaining experience. How does that work? How does that work? That works. Um, um, the way that works is that for every one of your classes, while they were learning, You'll be working on what on um you um uh, working on what on projects, case studies, that the facilitators, people that are good that are teaching you the skills that they have worked on during their experience, they've worked on in the um they've worked on um um in their past industry, they've worked on these problems during their role as a data engineer, for instance, or as a cybersecurity analyst. Those problems will be brought to to the class, whereby. As you are learning, you are actually working on the real life problem that you would work on while you do have the, when you do have the job. So you are working on a job while not yet having the job, if you get what I mean. So you are learning how to use a tool and you are learning how to use a tool to solve a business problem. And then you also have the internship whereby you work on the different projects and then all of that will now culminate for you to have a great experience and so on your cv you're not going to be placing irrelevant experience now when i say irrelevant experience there's really nothing like a useless experience but whatever experience you have would need to be converted into valuable experience for instance I'll, um let's say you're a teacher how can your how can your experience in teaching be um, let's say you're a teacher and you want to be a data analyst on your cv you're not going to place teacher what you place there would be something but we got into that anyways all right but what you place there would be you converting your teaching experience into that of data analytics so you are coming from an experience point of view from an experience section and you're not oh this person does not really have any experience and then also in the experience section you have all of the projects that you've worked on and another step okay for you to get a job while you learning in three months four months that you are sure of getting a job another practical step is because you would also be getting employability skills i always tell people that it's one thing for you to learn a skill because people say, oh, I learned how to be a data analyst for five, five years ago, six years ago. Probably you have a friend, okay? You probably have a friend that says he or she is a uh, HR analyst and that they learned HR analytics five years ago and that till now, till now they don't have a job in tech. That's because they are lacking what we call the other 50%, which I would expatiate more on. Okay? For you to be able to to, for you to be employed it's one thing for you to have the skills for you to be able to do the job it's another thing for the recruiter to know that you can actually do the job if i want to bake a cake or let's say i have an event and i need a baker i need someone that is amazing with what flour um can do, do something amazing for me i want a five a five step cake i think they are called five steps I hope I did not, I got that right now. Okay, so anyways, unless I want cakes, like, like a five story, and you are a baker, a fantastic one at that. How will I know that you can bake? What would make me employ you? 
for you to get a job, it is not enough to just be able to do the job. For you to get a job, it's not enough for you to just learn the skills. For you to get a job, there's something more that is needed. Your employability skills. How you can have a great CV that fits the job requirements for the job you're applying to. How you can optimize your LinkedIn profile to ensure that recruiters are reaching out to you personally to tell you to apply for roles that you did not even know existed. And then we also have what networking. Being a, in a community of individuals that are like-minded. All right, whereby you get to speak with people. Just sometime this year, all right, we had a we had uh we had Steven, okay, Steven. It was in the previous slide. Now Steven got a job after completing the program. Steven got a job when he got uh, we prepped him for the interview. We gave him a reference and all of that, and then he got the job as a data analyst in um, Scotland. Now, the company that employed Steven said that they wanted more persons. If Steven knew anyone that would be able to fit into um, other available roles. And what did Steven do? Steven reached out to us if we knew any anybody that is um if we knew anybody that um, is capable and that will be able to get the job. Okay. And then we sent we place this out and then some persons applied and then we send the CV down to what? Down to Steven. And then Steven gave it to the company and today those, particip those participants are working with Steven. That is the power of networking. You having what we call connections, <laughs> okay? But in this case, the connections would be you having individuals that have the same goal as you. So that when any opportunity arises, you are in the you are the first to know. And also being mentored. Mentorship. But you work with the best in the industry to guide you through your journey. Being mentored, being told, because sometimes you could go ahead to apply, to apply, and you know, you're applying for roles and you feel and you feel like um, you feel like, oh, those roles I'm applying to, you've not even gotten a single interview. Maybe you've applied for 25 roles, for 30 roles, for 50 roles. And you've not gotten even a single interview. You need someone to tell you that it's fine. Even the best of us get rejections. You need someone to tell you that it's okay. This is what you need to do. You need someone that would work with you closely to understand what are you doing wrong and would help you do and would um, put you in the right place to ensure that you are doing the right things, you are applying at the right time, you are applying to the right jobs, and that you do get a job. Working with mentors will save you precious time. Instead of you trying to get a job, um, instead of you applying, um, instead of you, um, instead of you getting a job after two years, that is shortened down to after five months. Because you are working with professionals that have been where you are at the moment, we're able to succeed and they know the right things to do and they tell you all of these things so you get all of these things done. They know the wrong things not to do and they tell you all of these things so you don't end up doing these things. So you then fast track your, um, your growth to success, your route to success. All of those skills, the six practical steps would help you get a job with no experience. No experience. Okay? So, again, I talked, I've, made, I've talked about all of this, but I want to repeat this, okay? Your CV is not going to have no experience. That is where the project-based experience comes in and the internship. And also, you combating whatever experience you have into valuable experience we should be taught. So many testimonials. And speaking about networking, this is something we just received last week. Last week. From the data engineering program, I'm sure the one is listening. Oh, it's listening. Okay, it's listening. Because this is an opportunity for you. This just came in last week. 
Networking is fantastic, guys. Now, we have Josephine. Josephine from the Data Engineering Corps, the April cohort. Okay. Uh, so um, just last week, um, um, Josephine got a job as a health analytics product manager at Oracle. And she was so excited. And so happy, so um, so happy at what Ten Analytics was. How we were able to help her in her journey to make that transition. That she's looking to help two females make that switch as well. I'll repeat that. Okay, I'll repeat that. Now, Josephine, Josephine, is was so excited on how we are able to help her out. That she did what? She um that that she um she reached out and mentioned that she would want to um help two female candidates that are looking to get into the program and are struggling with the fee. Just last week. You want to ensure you are what? That you are in a great network. Now, about converting your experience, let's say, remember I've talked about the fact that whatever experience you have, okay, that whatever experience you have, that you want to, um, um, that you, you want to ensure that it's converted to valuable experience. Okay, and this is an example. Let, let's say you are a teacher, you are a teacher, and you want to be a data analyst. What is the first thing for you to do? Identify your desired career path. Number one. Number two is what? Um, number two is that you learn the skills. So this is where we're coming. All right. So of course, at the moment you are in this, you're in stage one. You are trying to identify your desired career path. You're joining a tech series event and you are listening to all of these. And then of course, the second stage would be to learn the skills. Because again, you want to get a job, you want to get a job, but there's no job for you if you can't do the work. You need to be able to get the work done. You need to be able to do the work for you to actually get the job. But again, that is not enough. The skills is not enough, but the skills is essential. Okay, so this is what we step in and we equip you with the skills, give you an immersive learning experience to equip you with everything you need to succeed in your role. And then you have move on to stage three, which is gaining project-based experience. Working on projects, and showing that the projects you're working on are life projects, in uh, life case studies, real life problems, for you to gain experience even as what? Even as a teacher. And then you have the employability skills. In your employability skills, this is where you get to learn how you can convert whatever. Uh, um, this is where you get to learn how you can uh, brand yourself, how you can place yourself in a great position. Like I said, let's say I want to bake a cake. I need a baker. You can bake. What would make me employ you? You need to ensure that you are that you are that your brand and what is your brand? The way you sell yourself, that you are well positioned in the market, and that you have all the skills you need to be able to navigate the job market, depending on your location. Gaining the playability skills is where you get to see how you can combat your your teaching experience to that of a data analyst. Let me give you a quick example. And this is just coming off the top of my head, okay? A quick example. Let's say you're a teacher and you want to uh, you want to apply for a job, okay? On your on your on your CV, you you are not going to place teacher there. Rather, you can place something like data uh, maybe um, data analyst with uh, maybe data analyst consultant with this particular with the school, okay. And then the job role is what would matter. On the job role, what you could place there would be, uh, and this is just coming off the top of my head, okay. So it can be well refined. You can have something like was able to gather data because as a teacher you probably took attendance, so um, taking the attendance of your students or your pupils, as the case may be, okay. So you want to have there was able to gather data of students. Okay, was able to gather data of students 
and using that data, I analyzed the data. Was um, I analyzed the data and was able to identify trends and patterns for students that are most likely going to drop off the system. Using then you mentioned your your data analytics skills, your Excel, your Power BI, and all of that. Because if you are told, if you are ever called upon to prove that you can use Excel, you can use Power BI. Of course, you can do do that because you've learned the skills already. So we are able to convert all of that. Um, uh, that you were yeah. So you, you, um, let me just rephrase, okay? So that you were able to analyze the data that you gathered using your your analytical tools, and you identify trends and patterns in the student attendance for those that are more likely going to, uh, that are more likely to, to drop off the system. And after notifying this, um, after identifying these trends and patterns, you. Uh, presented this to the stakeholders for actions to be taken. Maybe you notice that uh, for after a student misses classes twice in a row, they are more likely going to drop off the system. And then you told the you told the you told the board, okay, you told the the stakeholders that hey, look here, I noticed that um I noticed that as a that a student that has been that a student that misses classes two times in a row that they are more likely to going to jump on the system so as soon as they miss class the first time then we begin to reach out we begin to ensure that um, we begin to reach out we begin to um, maybe send messages to bring them back so this was the suggestion you gave to the stakeholders and then this was implemented and then we had a 20 percent reduction in the number of students that that um that dropped out per semester or per um ten. That's just that just came off the top of my head. So it's not it's not well structured yet. Okay, but you get what I mean. So you are converting your experience into valuable experience. That is what employability skills are all about. Because, like I said, of course, when you want to apply for jobs, you're going to see I need someone with five years experience. That's really really that's the current climb, and we know that, and we still know what works. You also have your networking, which I've explained, okay? And of course, your mentorship. And then you become Glowy, the data analyst. Yeah, portfolios you can take a look at, okay? Like, as you can see, so this is what I have done, my evidence. What is your evidence? Your experience. So that when you are saying, so that, because you're not going to come from a place of no experience. Because people telling me that, oh, I used to say, I want to work on a project with you because when I'm working on projects and I need to deliver on time, because of course I have, uh, I work with, uh, I've been able to work with various organizations. That when I'm doing this, okay, when I'm doing this, when I'm working on the project, I need to deliver, let's say, in the next two weeks, three weeks, and then I really don't have the time. I might go ahead to get some persons that will work with me on the project, interview them, I usually head on. What do I mean by head on thing? I don't have the time for, for, to send out uh, job links. So I just go on LinkedIn, search for a uh, profiles I think would be best for the role. And then I reach out to them to send me their CV, if they're interested, and we have an interview, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So um, I guess some person is telling me that, I should say, please, can I work with you? I really don't have experience, but I want to, um, can you help me? Can I say, that's, that is not the, that's not the way to position yourself in the market. Be like Glory. Have a portfolio. Have proof. Oh, I should say, yes, I have experience. And then when I say, when I say oh, yes, you have experience. You say, oh, yes, I do have experience. And then I tell you, show me what you've worked on. And you have things to show. You need a portfolio. A portfolio that contains your projects, things you've worked on, things that would prove to me that you can do the work. And yeah, portfolios of our different students. Once you have the slides, you can take a look at those portfolios. You will be shown how you can create these portfolios, how you can have a portfolio that would contain all of the project that is life. So whenever a recruiter needs a portfolio, needs to see what you've done, all you need to do is to send the link. You're not sending files. You're just going to send the link. You click on the link. It opens up your, your portfolio. <laughs> I'm giving nuggets. Nuggets of wisdom. If you're still with me, send I'm with you. Okay, send I'm with you to the chat box. Okay, if you've been listening to this, so this, this is I've, I've, I've been dropping nuggets, nuggets of wisdom, how to succeed. Okay, okay, so if you're still with me, send I'm with you to the chat box. So Kenneth says I'm with you. Fantastic. 
Ijaba says I'm with you. Ade says I'm with you. What about the rest of us? Are you guys with me? Razak says I am with you. Brenda says I'm with you. Razak says it's fantastic. Okay. Bishop says I'm with you. Sent in with Emma. Fantastic. Okay. Good to know we are following. Now, let's see how can you get into this career path. These eight different paths that I've mentioned, how can you get into this path? Easy. As a business analyst, for you to be a business analyst, you need the technical skills, no doubt about it. And what do you need? You need your Excel, your Power BI, and your SQL, previously known as SQL. Okay? You need your process mapping, your project initiation planning, your Agile and Scrum for projects. Your Excel, Power BI, and SQL will give you a flavor of data analytics and would help you function well in your role as a what? Business analyst. You have your project initiation planning. How do you initiate a project? Your agile and scrum for projects. We are in the world of agile now. So if working in industries as a business analyst, you want to ensure that you are familiar with the current methodology, with the current framework that is being used by numerous companies. We have a licitation. How can you gather requirements? Your requirement fundamentals. How can you get requirements from what? From your stakeholders. Being a business analyst is you serving as the bridge between the business stakeholders and um the and the, the technical stakeholders and the non-technical stakeholders, helping to take an organization, helping to take the business from where they are at the moment to where they want to be. So you need all of those skills, and of course, you need your chat GPT for business analysis how you can leverage AI to make it more efficient and more productive. Okay? Now, these are the things you need to be a business analyst. To be a data analyst, what do you need? You need your problem solving, your Excel, your SQL, your Power BI, your Tableau, your data storytelling, your chat GPT for analytics. Data storytelling is very, very important, people. Okay, there's this stuff I came up with, and I think I would like to tell it to you as well. Okay, and what is that? If you are a data analyst and you tell me that you're a data analyst and you can't solve problems, please note you are not a data analyst, you are a dashboard builder. A data analyst must be able to solve problems. And a data analyst must be able to communicate your insights. If you can't do any of those things, you are not a data analyst, you are a dashboard builder. You can use Excel, but you are not a data analyst. So this problem solving and your data storytelling, it's very important for you as a data analyst. Because as a data analyst, you are going to be communicating your insights to stakeholders. You are going to be having presentations. You are going to be telling the business and how they can move forward. For a data scientist, what do you need? You need your statistics, your forecasting on your predictive analytics, your Tableau, your SQL, your Python programming, okay, your Python um, that you're going to use for your EDA, your machine learning, and your computer, your computer vision. A data scientist stops where they, um, stop, um, continues from where a data analyst stops. A data analyst does two major things, which is tell you why um, what happened and why it happened talking about your descriptive analytics and your diagnostic analytics. A data scientist will take it a step further and will go ahead to predict the future, will tell you what is to come, will tell you that, oh, in the next five years, this is going to happen. A data, anal a data scientist will carry out the predictive analytics. And that is the reason why you need your Python and, of course, your machine learning for you to build your machine learning models. And then a data engineer is the person that will get the data from the different data sources and will provide and will give it all and will send it over to what? To the data analyst and the data scientist. The data engineer is the one that provides the data by building different pipelines, getting the data from different data sources, placing it in a database or a data warehouse, and providing it to those that need data. A data engineer needs your SQL, your Python, 
your Linux, I can use Linux. You need your Apache, um, your Apache Airflow for automation, your Apache Spark, your AWS uh, for cloud engineering, and also your Azure. Okay, these are the things you need. And for you to be an HR analyst, as an HR analyst, you are a data analyst, but a data analyst that focuses on what HR data. One of the key parts of being one of the key parts of being uh, of being an H one of the key parts of a company of any organization is the people. And as a um oh apologies, I was explaining HR analyst and not <laughs> apologies, okay? So yeah, as a um HR analyst, one of the key parts of any organization is what the people. And as a HR analyst, it's your duty to ensure that talent is optimized that you have high talent and you have talent retention, you have a uh, good performance of the employees. And due to that fact, you are going to be using data. You are going to be analyzing people data and telling the organization how they can move forward. Having what we call stay interviews instead of what exit interviews. That can only be possible through analyzing data. Same thing for the financial analyst. The financial analyst is also a data analyst, but a data analyst that focuses on what financial data, helping to maintain the financial health of the organization. And so just like the data analyst, the financial analyst and the HR analyst will go ahead to learn their data skills, your problem solving, your Excel, your Power BI, and your SQL. And then you then, spe you then specialize in your area the financial analyst going ahead to learn about the accounting fundamentals, the financial analysis, financial modeling, your valuation, and also your sensitivity and scenario analysis. While the HR analyst goes ahead to learn about your uh, your HR analytics and performance evaluation, your HR metrics and life cycle, HR analysis and dashboarding, and also your collaboration and report automation. If you want to be a product, a project manager, agile project manager is for you, or agile project manager management. Okay, what who is an agile project manager? An agile project manager is a coach for a uh, for an agile team to ensure that everyone on the team is following agile rules. They are working well together, and that they are still well aware of the company goals to and that everything that is being done is to achieve that like i mentioned earlier many organizations use agile the agile framework and what is what does agile say agile says that you can be flexible you know your washing machine you want to wash clothes what do you do okay you want to wash clothes what do you do you begin with your you begin with you wash okay so you place it on the washing machine, you wash, and then after washing, you rinse, and then after rinsing, you um after washing, you rinse, after rinsing, you spin, then after spinning, you dry. That is a sequence. You have to do one before you move to the other. Agile sales says you can wash, you can rinse, you can dry, and you can spin all at the same time. You can be flexible. Agile says that if you are creating the product, if you are working on a new application, that the application does not have to be complete before you can go ahead to launch. Agile say, says you can have multiple iterations. Whereby you now have things like version 1.0, version 2.0. I'm sure you know version 2.0. We have applications out there that you have uh, different versions, 5.0, 6.0, 7.0, and all of that. <laughs> okay, so that's Agile. And one thing about being flexible is there's room for chaos. When you are flexible, there can be chaos. This person is working at this point, this person is working at this point, and no one is working together. And so the agile project manager is made to ensure that there is order and that everyone is working towards achieving company what goals. Earlier, we had the scrum. Earlier, the Asia project manager was uh, we have the Asia project management program was just the scrum master, but now it has been expanded, so you get to learn other agile frameworks. 
And the reason for that is to give you more opportunities. In case if a company does not want to go with Scrum, so let's say the company is not using the Scrum methodology, so you, you are not kicked out. You can use the Kanban you, because different companies use different agile methodologies. And so you being an agile project manager means that you are proficient in each and every one of them. And the tools you'll be working with, of course, you have your Jira and your Trello. You also have your Asana, okay, working with Confluence. Those are the tools that you um, that a project manager uses. And if you're interested in cybersecurity, how can you get into cybersecurity? To get into cybersecurity, you need to understand your foundations of computing and networking. So it doesn't matter if you have some knowledge of cybersecurity or if you have no knowledge and you're looking to start from scratch. No problem. You begin with your foundations of computing and networking. You move to your introduction to cybersecurity, your information security principles, the offensive and defensive cybersecurity, your cryptography and basics, and all of that. A cybersecurity analyst ensures that companies' resource is well protected and that people that should not have access to the company's resources do not have access to the company's resources. Talking about the company's databases, talking about the company's networks. All of those skills are what you need if you're looking to get into any of this career path. But like I said earlier, it's not enough for you to just have the skills. It's not enough for you to all, it's not enough for you to just be able to, um, it's not enough for you to just be able to do the work. That's not enough to get to the job. You need something else. You need the other 50% which is what will land you the job. Many persons have only the first 50%, which is the technical skills. They can work with Wireshark if they're a cybersecurity analyst. They can work with Power BI if they're a data analyst. They can work with Python if they're a data scientist. But they, they're not employable. They don't have the employability skills, lacking the other 50%. And for you to get a job, the equation needs to be complete. We know what works. And we show you what works. And that's why we are very, very much successful. For you to get the other 50%, there are things you need. And what is that? You need your what? Your CV review. You need to have a great CV. A CV that passes through the ATS system. Some persons go ahead to send a CV and they think they've gotten the job. They're like, oh, I just sent my CV now. I know I'm the perfect fit. And the next five, six days they're about, I know I'm going to get a call back from the recruiter. Or let me give let me give the recruiter one week extra because the recruiter also has family. So they will spend time with family. So one week to spend with family, five days to look through the CV. And so let's say uh let's say the next two weeks they're about, I should get a call back. And they don't even get a rejection letter. Do you know what a rejection email means? I don't think we know what a, what a rejection email means. Not everyone receives rejection emails. What is a rejection email? A rejection email is a confirmation that your CV was looked at, uh, was looked at, but they are but they are not willing to go with you. That is what a rejection email says. That your CV was looked at. You were given a trial. Many persons don't even get to that stage. As soon as they hit send on the job uh, board, they hit send, send the CV, the ATS is also hitting delete. <laughs> the recruiter does not even know they exist because you have so many persons applying for jobs and at the end of the day, the recruiter could have to have seen just 20 or 50 CVs, maybe sometimes even 10 or less than 10. So the CV this session will show you how you can craft a winning CV. A CV that passes through the ATS and not only passes through the ATS, but that the CV also, uh, that uh, not just passes through the ATS, but that it gets to the recruiter. And when the recruiter takes a look at the CV, they know that you are the one for the job and they go ahead to book an interview session with you. The CV review session will show you how you can convert your current experience into valuable experience. Just like the teacher I mentioned earlier. Then you also have your LinkedIn session. I mentioned earlier that I recruit from LinkedIn a lot. Okay? 
I I head on. I search for profiles, then I send them uh, messages. So with my account, I can send anyone any message. Okay. Oh, I have this role open if you're interested and apply, blah, blah, blah. Send me your CV. Okay. I say blah, blah, blah a lot. <laughs> but that's just some fun. That's just by the way. Okay. So I know we're still with me, but just as a confirmation, if you're still with me, send with me to the or send with you to the chat box. Okay. Send the with you to the chat box if you're still listening. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Okay, so Elizabeth is still with me. Uh, Jeremiah is still with me. Razak is still with me. Great. Now, like I said, I recruit a lot from LinkedIn. And many recruiters do this as well. Okay, because they are looking for what? Top talent. And so you usually don't have the time to send up a job post and all of that. Okay, so what we'll do is that we'll go on LinkedIn and we search for the role. Only profiles that are... Because for me, this is this is what I do anyways. When I search for these roles, let's say I want someone that can do, let's say a data analyst now. Let's say I want, or let's say a financial analyst. Or I want a cybersecurity analyst. I go ahead and I search for cybersecurity analyst. Different profiles will pop up. I'm not going to choose, I'm not going to open up all profiles. Only those that attract me. What is the first thing I see? What is the first thing I take note of? Your profile picture. On LinkedIn. LinkedIn is not Instagram. Instagram, you can post while you're eating. Okay? But LinkedIn should be more professional. So, this is my, this is just my own thoughts. Maybe some other recruiters do something different. Okay? But for me, the first thing that attracts me to uh, is your profile picture. Have something nice. Something, you don't have to have something over the top. Just a, a nice professional headshot, looking good, clear. And not one that you post while you're, you know, like uh, maybe your birthday photo when you when you post like this or something else. That is not it. <laughs> okay. So that is the first thing I take a look at for. And if you have a good profile picture, then what do I do? I open up your profile and then I take a look at the things you've listed, your skills. I take a look at the things you've been able to um the, the, uh, accomplish. And then I decide if you are fit for the role or not. And if I think you are, I then send you a message telling you um, about the role, explaining the bits, and that if you're interested, you can send in your CV. And then we fix an interview and uh, time. That can only be possible if you have a well up to my LinkedIn profile. I would only reach out to you, and the same goes for every recruiter. They would only reach out to you if your LinkedIn profile is great. The LinkedIn optimization session will show you how your LinkedIn profile can be top notch, how you can have in mails. What are in mails? Whether you're receiving alerts on job posts that, that you would be a perfect fit for. If you want to go into freelancing, if you're interested in what? If you're interested in uh, in freelancing, you want to work only a certain time of the week. Upwork is for you. The Upwork optimization session will show you how you can succeed as a freelancer using Upwork. You also have navigating the job market, which will show you how you can succeed in your current path, in the path you're looking to get into. And then, of course, job and interview preparation for when you've gotten the, when you've been called for an interview so you don't wash out during the interview stage. Interviews are not guarantees that you've gotten a job. Please, if you thought about, if you had that notion previously, wash it out. The fact you've gotten an interview does not mean you've gotten a job. You are not the only one being interviewed. An interview is a competition and the best wins. And that is why we have the job and interview preparation session, whereby you've gotten an interview. You can go ahead to book for an interview uh, prep session with a professional that will take you through things you should expect, questions you should expect, how you can answer those questions, how you can be prepared to ensure that you do get the job. And when the recruiter wants a reference letter, we are sure of giving you a reference letter as long as you're a participant or an alumnus with analytics. And then we also have the weekly mentorship session. Like I spoke about this earlier, being mentored weekly, all right, being told how you can succeed in the industry, new things to try out. So hasting your, your path to success. And this happens weekly. And we also offer on the job support, whereby you've gotten the job, you've gotten the role, some things are not so clear. You've been given a tax. You don't know where to start. That, that rhymes. <laughs> I think I should go into music. What do you guys think? Okay. Um, you've been given a tax. 
and you don't know where to start, I think I should go into music. Do you guys think so? Do you think, <laughs> do you think I should go into music? Do you think I have a talent for, for singing? <laughs> so what do we think? I know I might have deviated a bit, but I just wanted to get her thoughts. Because I think I just I just bust out a rhyme. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Okay, so Elizabeth says I got the rhymes, right? And um Daniel says if I want to. <laughs> so I think I'll succeed in, in music. I think I'll 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 choose my stage name. Okay, so maybe my stage name will be Tech Bro. Okay, or Tech Tech Bro. I think Tech Bro will be my 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 so Vazak Vazak does not want me to go. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So we also offer on the job support, right? So let's say you've started work and you've begun the tax, and like I said, you don't know where to start. Okay, you can reach out to us and we provide guidance. Oh, you can do this, you can do that. Click on this, click on that, and then you go back to work and you blow their heads off by doing amazingly well. And when I say blow their heads off, I don't mean that literally. That's a figure that that's figurative joke. Okay, so that's a figure of speech. Don't blow anyone's head off. All right, just to clarify. So all of these things would be would help you brand yourself well to ensure that you do what land an interview. And that's one guarantee that we are giving to you. That one month into the program, we are guaranteeing um, that one month after completing your training with us, we are guaranteeing you what an interview, a job interview. As long as you do everything we tell you to do, you know, you apply when you tell you to apply, you apply for as many roles as possible, you are sure of getting an interview. Something we also do at the moment is that every week you will be getting job posts, job links every week, new job links. OK, so you'll be getting job posts on and these are premium jobs because we are subscribed on sites that you would need to pay to get um access to job posts. There are sites like that, websites whereby it's not open like LinkedIn and the rest that you can just go online and just search for jobs. You need to pay to get access to the jobs. OK, so you'll be getting premium jobs every week both sponsorship jobs and jobs that are, are and for the normal jobs, if you're not looking for sponsorship and roles and um, remote jobs that you can apply to new job links every week. And of course you can also be applying by the side. So you have, it's, it's, I usually tell people it's easy to get a job. Okay. It's easy if you know what you're doing. And of course that might be seem a bit biased. Like, Oh, I just say you're just saying that because it's you, it's not easy. I understand. I understand where you're coming from. But think about this. For you to get an interview, it means that your CV passed the that the CV passed the your eight the eight years and that the recruiter wants to meet with you. A CV is just a piece of paper or a digital paper now. They have not seen you. The recruiter did not see you and say, oh, I don't like your face. The recruiter did not see you and say, oh, I don't like the way you sound. And that was the reason why you did not get the job. It's just a paper. There's a way that paper can be crafted. There's a way you can create the craft that paper based on the job requirement that you will be sure, or at least you would have a high chance of getting an interview. In addition to the numerous roles that you can apply to, and that I showed us earlier, that's a data analyst, there are so many roles you can apply to. And you would also be provided with over 40 with um, over 40 different job sites that you can go ahead to be applying for jobs. Many persons just know LinkedIn indeed, uh, with the code.uk and in Butte. There's so much more. Don't be narrow. Expand your search. Okay, so we also track um and we also track your job applications because one thing that we do, one thing that what we call success here at Analytics is you getting a job. You will get the skill, of course, but what we say is a success is you getting a job. And we are very, very much successful. And I'm sure you understand what that means. Okay, we have a job tracker whereby as soon as you apply for jobs, you go ahead to the tracker, you fill in your details. Okay, you fill in the, your details. Uh, you fill in the details, the details of the job. And then we take a look at the top 10%. Okay, we take a look at the ten, top 10% 10 at the end of the month. That top 10%, okay, the top 10% would, uh, that's, and how can you get into the top 10% by applying for numerous roles, right? We take a look at the top 10%. And if we notice you've not even gotten a single interview, 
Like, you've not got it. I know you get a job, but let's even start on the interview. You've not even gotten one interview. With the, and you're among the top 10% that have been applying, you've been applying, then something is wrong. You've applied for 30, 40 votes. You've not gotten one. One interview. One. When, it's, like I said, it's just a piece of paper. Something is wrong. It's not that the way you speak or they don't like something about you. You've not gotten one interview. Something is wrong. And what would happen? We'll reach out to you personally. We'll have a, a private session with you. Whereby we get to take a look at what's really wrong. We we help you tell out your job application. Take a look at your CV. Understand why you're not getting called for interviews. It doesn't make sense if you're doing the right things. Because there are so many opportunities available. Like I mentioned earlier. I showed us the job report. So many opportunities available in each and every one of this career path. At the start of the year, and I always mention this, that France released a report that said that they had a shortage of tech talent, a shortage. There are so many roles available and not enough hands to get, uh, not enough hands to be um, to um, employ. Okay. And we also have a dual learning approach, okay? Once you get into the program, you're going to an account to be um, created for you on the LMS. And what is the LMS? It's a place where you get to uh, where you get to watch what we call watch me do it videos that would introduce you to concepts you are going to be learning in the next class. So we have a dual learning approach. We have a, we have live classes, just like what we have now. We are speaking with me. We are interacting. We are asking questions, working on problems, learning. And then we have the videos on, uh, okay, the videos that you watch and you get to learn new concepts, new things that will be taught in the next class. So it doesn't matter if you are a slow learner. It doesn't matter if you're a fast learner. That's really no problem. You are good to go. Okay. You are what? You are good to go. So a dual learning approach, you like, you like life classes, no problem, you are fine. Oh, I love videos, no problem, you are fine. Yeah, act analytics. All right, so how can you get a job? You might be wondering, is it only five persons? No, not five persons, they are numerous. Like I showed you, I showed you so many, I showed you so many, um, so many, uh, uh, I, yeah, I showed you about, I think I've shown about seven, testimonials and i mentioned that we've been able to help over 2500 p persons we can't place all of them on the slides but they are numerous how we were able to help booking how we able to help um, share okay so we have another session whereby we brought in these guys to come and speak to um to uh the audience on how they were able to make the switch how they got a job after training with analytics so you can go ahead to click on this link and listen in and be inspired and do the same know that is possible it's possible. Okay, so many testimonials. Listen to Ikmat. How we are able to help Ikmat make that switch. They are so numerous, guys. So numerous. When you have the time, go through all of the testimonials. Our core, the next course is going to begin on the 7th of September. Okay, so if you know you want to be a part of the program, ensure, um, if you know you want to be a part of the program, that's going to begin on the 7th of September. All you have to do is to make a commitment. And what is that commitment? For you to be a part of the program, you get to pay a fee of $750 if you are in what? If you're in the US, you get all £625 if you are paying in pounds, and 730 euros if you're paying in euros, or 1125 Canadian dollars. But if you are among the first 20 persons to register, you get to be part of the 20% discount where you pay 20% less. And so you get to pay $600. If you are paying in what? If you are paying in dollars, you get to pay five hundred pounds. Or if you are paying in pounds or five hundred and eighty euros or nine hundred Canadian dollars. All right, and you can also break this into two segments. You can also break this into two segments. So you can make a first installment and also the second installment. Now the first installment is where you um um the first installment you get to pay that before the start of the program to get you onboarded into the program, and then one month into the program that will be at the end of September you get to make payments for the second installment. All right, my colleague has sent in the the um the job details. Okay, so um the. Uh, not the, sorry, let me mention job details. So we have to get jobs. So jobs, jobs, jobs is just in my head right now. Okay, but my colleague has sent in the um the 
uh, payment details to the chat box. So you can go ahead to click on the link. Get, you get taken to the enrollment center and then you see um, how to make payments. I would also show it to us. Just give me a moment. Okay, so I would show us what the payments um uh, I will show us what the payments uh, platform looks like. Okay, so just give me a moment. Okay, so uh, once you click on that link, it's going to open up the Ten Analytics Enrollment Center. All right, so this is just taking a bit of time to load. I think my bandwidth might be a bit low. Hmm. That's another line. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I think I think I think music is a new career path. Okay, I think music is a new career path for me. All right, but I'll just try to refresh this. Okay. Um. So we get to see how we can make payments. Okay, so um, as soon as this opens up, I will come back here later on. All right, but once you click on that link, it's going to open up. And um, once you click on that link, it's going to open up the um, the enrollment center, and then you can go ahead to make payments, and of course to uh, register for the program. There are a lot, lots and lots of testimonials, over 2,500 persons that we've been able to help. Ensure that you do what? That you register and that you're part of the first 20 persons to register so that you do key to the discounts, okay? So many testimonials, as soon as you get the slides, take a look at the persons we've been able to help. How we are able to help any, any what's in the data science program. We're able to help any get a job as a CEO of growth stack. Any join the data science program. In January, okay, he joined the data science program and he got a job in January 2024. Now, when any applied for the job, he did not, when he applied for the role, it was not for the role of the CEO, okay? But due to the experience, due to the things he was able to do, due to the skills he had gained, the company decided that, oh, why don't you become a CEO? And they had another meeting and then, of course, they spoke with any and then he became a CEO. Listen to any like, um, this, this is not just me saying things now. Click on this link, no, on this link, listen to Ine speak. So many persons we've been able to help. So many testimonies. I can go on, on and on and on and on and on. Okay. So um, once you get access to the slides, ensure you go through all of this for you to know that it's it's very, very much possible for you to uh for you to get that um for you to get that role and to succeed in whatever you teach you're looking to do. Okay. So I think I would take questions, maybe a question or two. So if you have questions for me, please go ahead to use the reason icon and I will call on you to ask your question. Okay. All right. So a lot of people is asking about the Naira payment. So um, once you click on the link, it's going to open up the enrollment center. And all you need to do, you can go to um, the card stroke online payment. You see the you see the online details. You see the amount, you, um, the price. That's what you need to pay. When using the card stroke online payment, and this is for anyone. So if you're in Ghana and you want to pay in CDs or you are in Australia, okay, and you're paying in Australian dollars or you are in India and you're paying in rupees, so wherever you are and you want to make payments, what you need to do, you can go to the card stroke online payments section. You click on the program you're looking to register um, um, for, and then um, it would open up the payments link. And, and you'd see that it's going to take note of your currency and you see the equivalent amount that you should be looking to pay. It's going to do the conversion for you and then you can go ahead to make a payment. Okay, if you have a question for me, you can use the raise and icon and I will call on you to ask your question. All right. I uh, okay. So Elizabeth has a question. Elizabeth, please go ahead to ask your question. All right. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm kind of confused between um I don't know which part to go for. Like financial, can a financial analyst work as a business analyst or a data analyst? Fantastic, fantastic question. So I'm going to answer your question, but before I do. 
um, for everyone, we are going to be having a clarity session during the week, okay? So um, details will be sent on that where you can have a, a, um, a more personalized question and answer section to take all your questions and to put you in the right path, okay? But Elizabeth, regarding your question, no, a financial analyst can no work as a business analyst. There are two different career paths, two very different career paths. A financial analyst is a data analyst. But a data analyst that specializes in financial matters, a data analyst that specializes in financial data, a data analyst that ensures that the company's financial health is optimal. And maybe we could even say maximal. Okay. A business analyst is someone that is helping to organize the company's process, helping to optimize the company's process, helping to take the company from where they are at the moment to where they ought to be, helping to take a look at how things can be done better. Or at the moment, this is what we are doing. It's taking us five days to deliver products to our customers that order. What can we do to bring that down to two days delivery? What can we do to bring that down to one day delivery? So we can deliver more products per day, thereby what? Making more money. A business analyst is heavy on documentation. A data a financial analyst is more on analyzing data, less on documentation, more on analyzing data and trying to get insights. A financial analyst and a business analyst, they are both front end. And when I say front end, what do I mean? You are at the face of everything. Everyone knows you in the organization. But a business analyst is more front end than a financial analyst. A financial analyst works more back end than a business analyst. For you to be a business analyst, you need to be able to you need to be able to communicate because you are going to be speaking with a lot of people you are going to be in everyone's faces oh i think we should do this oh i think we should do this asking everyone questions i talk speaking with all of the stakeholders all right so yeah there are two different things they are not the same you cannot be a financial you cannot be a business analyst um, um you can't go for financial analytics and then become a business analyst all right yeah all right thank you very much of course Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for the question. Right. Okay, um, I think that's that's all. So, like I said, we'd have a session, a clarity session, where we take more questions. Okay, so uh, thank you, everyone. I don't think I have any other question. Thank you for joining in. I hope we had a nice time. Okay, I hope I hope we are all had a nice time. Okay, and that we learned a lot from the program or from the session rather, and uh, we got to see that I should say I can bust a few rhymes. Okay, <laughs> please ensure that we we follow what we usually tell our kids. And what is that? What do we tell our kids most of the time? There's this popular rhyme, again with the rhymes. And what does that say? Tick tick says the clock. What you have to do, do quick. Ensure you register right now. Cheers, guys. Have a good day. Bye.